Dean now with Natalie Bennett from the Green Party. So a nice warm welcome for Natalie. It's come all about the way up from London today. joke too seriously no I did come up on the train <laughs> uh, it takes four hours up here and four hours back so people often ask me where is my office and the answer is a train carriage somewhere in the country so as you might imagine I get more passionate about renationalizing the railways about three times a week on average but of course today we know why we're all here and I must admit that this is an issue the state of our hen harriers, our missing thousands of hen harriers, is something I only learned about quite recently. I learned about it when I went to Hebden Bridge, and that was after the flooding. And where I started with the whole issue of driven grouse shooting was the issue of flooding. And when I visited Hebden Bridge, I visited a woman who runs a lovely little fair trade clothing shop. And after the last lot of floods, she'd actually installed a floodgate in her shop. And this time, the flood, the flood went about six inches over the top of that floodgate. And what people in Hebden Bridge were telling me was that they felt that six inches and quite a bit more was due to the nature of the management up on the moors, the way in which the heather was being burnt, the bog moss was being destroyed, and the land was being simply awfully mismanaged. Yes. And what happened then was I was taken for a walk on the moors. And somehow or another, this being just after the floods, it was January, one day I'm going to manage a walk on the moors that is not in midwinter. It always seems to end up being that. But aside from being rather chilled, I also saw the damage that was being done. And one of the things that really struck me was I found a rabbit carcass by the road that had been knocked by a car. And that rabbit carcass must have been there for at least a week. And it hadn't been scavenged. And as I'd been walking around, I'd seen the stoat traps, visible, shiny, silver metal stoat traps. And I learnt and saw that there were no corvids, no crows, no other carrion birds up there. And I started to understand what the management of grouse moors actually means. It's industrialization of some of our most beautiful, most important natural environments. And it has to stop. <laughs> now I can see a sign up there at the back, which I think sums it up very well. Stop harrying harriers now. We all know it has been illegal to kill raptors, to kill hen harriers for decades. And yet somehow, whenever they fly over a grouse moor, whenever they try and nest on a grouse moor, they're in grave danger. We have to say this is absolutely unacceptable. And I've just met the Police and Crime Commissioner for Derbyshire, and I'm sure we've all got a message for all of the police in Britain, all of the relevant forces. They have to do more. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, it's not easy or simple, and we all understand that, and we can't expect miracles from our police forces. So what we've got to do is say to the owners of this land, you, know, you can't hide behind the fact that, oh, I didn't know what my staff was doing. You are responsible. We will hold you responsible. But ultimately, we have to come back to an issue, an issue of the nature of the driven grouse shooting industry. This is an industry that now on its own account is producing grouse numbers 100 times the natural level. The only way you do that is by severely distorting the ecosystem. You can't do it any other way. 
And of course, we ask the question, why are you doing this? You're doing this to shoot them. Really, if you think of an obscenity, that really is an obscenity. And in a civilised country, it's got to stop. Now, today, we are, of course, focusing on one species. And I do have to say, you know, I think we should give a round of applause and a thank you to, a put to our head Harry here. in January in that suit definitely uh, and thank you to all the people who've pushed this campaign and pushed this issue year after year as these hen harrier gray days have grown and developed but it's also a chance to talk about broader issues to talk about what we're doing overall to our natural environment and there's one figure that I think sums up very well what we're doing to our natural environment and that's the fact that over the past 40 years Within my lifetime, the number of wild animals in the world has halved. There is half the number of wild animals in the world there were 40 years ago. We are trashing this planet. And what we're doing here in this environment to the hen harriers is just part of a broader issue of the fact that we, we are dependent on this planet. Ultimately, when you come down to it, the economy is a subset of the environment. We are utterly dependent on that. And you might expect me to talk about climate change, and you know, the reality of climate change is that we have you know, the last 14 months in a row, month after month after month, we've broken the global climate records. But what we've also got is oceans that are being turned into a plastic soup. We've got soils, which we're destroying what we now know is a massive, complicated ecosystem. Now, my first degree is agricultural science, and I can get really geeky about soils, but don't worry, I won't do that today. I won't do that to you. But you know, we have really have to look at the state of the planet, the way we're treating it. And what we can do is talk about the wonderful species that are the hen harriers, their amazing life, their beauty, you know, to catch a glimpse of one of them, something, I've read Mark Avery's book, I'm sure you all know, The Inglorious Twelfth, and him talking about the first time he saw a hen harrier and how it totally made his day as a young person. We want young people in the future to be able to have that same experience, but we also want them to be in a livable world. And we can use iconic, beautiful, <coughs> wonderful species like the hen harrier, and we can fight to save them, we can fight to ban grubbin grouse shooting, but we've also got to think about saving our whole world because we have this world for our children. We need to protect it. You know, it's not even just a case of protection. We've got to enhance, restore what's been damaged over the past century and more. So let's think about hope because I think it's really important to think about hope. And I think the fact that everybody's here today, that there's been 12 hen harrier days up and down the country, that people are gathering and saying, you know, we're not gonna take this anymore. The petition last I saw is heading towards 80,000 signatures. that the Green Party is going to be making a big push on that to make sure because, you know, we need to get to that 100,000. We've got to do it soon. <laughs> then we take it to Parliament. But, of course, that's not an end point. You know, I, we have to acknowledge that probably most of the parliamentarians who'll turn up for that debate will be the people who get it already anyway. So what you can do, what everyone here can do, is push very hard to make sure your MP turns up too, particularly if they don't get it. Yeah. Write them emails, write them, those weird old things, letters. <laughs> write them letters, go and visit them at their surgery, say you have to be there when we have that debate. And any other MP you can think of that you've got some connection with, any of your friends, tell them to do that too. Let's put the pressure on. 
and acknowledge that that parliamentary debate is only the start. What we have to do is go much further, keep pushing, keep pressuring, until we get to the point where our hen harriers are genuinely protected, genuinely safe on every moor, every bit of land in Britain. So I have a saying which is that politics should be something you do, not have done to you. And you might or might not think of what you're doing today as politics, but I can assure you it is. And this is what we need to turn Britain around in all kind of ways. We need everyone to do politics. We can't leave it to them down in Westminster. We can't leave it to your local MP. We've all got to say, we're going to create a better world. We're not just going to protect the hen harriers. We're going to protect our whole natural environment, our whole social environment. And let's do that together, because together that's how we can do it. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed, Natalie. That was uh, amazing. And I must admit, as someone who's very sceptical about politicians, I was uh, inspired by that speech. So uh, it's not often you're going to hear me say I was inspired by a politician, believe me. But uh, that was fantastic. Thanks so much, Natalie, for making the efforts to come up and join us tonight.